Right now, as you are sitting there listening to this, your body is not entirely yours. You are being carried around by a colony. And no, that is not a metaphor. You are biologically speaking absolutely swarming with bacteria. You have tiny living things on your skin and your mouth, up your nose, and most definitely all over your gut. It is like a microscopic block party, and you are the dance floor. So, how many bacteria are we talking about here? Well, for years, scientists repeated this catchy little phrase. There are 10 times more bacterial cells in your body than human cells. That idea spread like wildfire. It showed up in textbooks, TED Talks, and those fun facts on the back of vitamin bottles. But like many things in science, it was kind of wrong. Let us dive in. That 10 to 1 ratio made people feel both fascinated and kind of gross. It suggested that if you counted all the cells that made up you, only about 10% were actually human. The rest, just a bacterial takeover. It made for great headlines. It gave us something cool to say at dinner parties. But in 2016, a group of researchers decided to take a closer look, and what they found was slightly less dramatic. Turns out, if you count carefully, the average adult human has about 30 trillion human cells. And the number of bacteria, roughly 39 trillion. So, yeah, there are still more bacteria than human cells, but it is not 10 times more, it is closer to a 1.3 to 1 ratio. Still weird, still amazing, just less headline friendly. And of course, those numbers can vary. If you go to the bathroom, for example, that bacterial number drops a little, which honestly makes sense. Most of them live in one place. Now, you might be imagining bacteria crawling around every inch of your body like something out of a bad horror movie, but the truth is the vast majority of them live in one very specific place, your gut. More specifically, your large intestine. That is the grand central station of your internal ecosystem. System. It is warm, it is moist, it is filled with food particles, basically, a five-star resort for microbes. If you are a bacterium, that is the place to be. Scientists call this collection of gut bacteria your gut microbiome. And let me tell you, it is not just hanging out there doing nothing. It is working hard. This microbiome helps you digest food, extract nutrients, produce certain vitamins, and even regulate your immune system. Some bacteria can even influence how your brain works. Yes, your bacteria might have an opinion about your mood today. There is ongoing research into how your gut microbiome microbiome might be connected to anxiety, depression, even decision-making. So if you find yourself craving cookies at 2 a.m., maybe it is not you, it is your microbes. You are born, mostly bacteria-free. Here is something wild. When you are born, you are basically a clean slate. Inside the womb, you are protected from the outside world, so your body has very few bacteria, almost none. But the moment you enter the world, the colonization begins. Babies pick up bacteria during birth, from their mother's skin, from breast milk, from the environment. Every kiss, every cuddle, every pacifier that falls on the floor, and gets cleaned with a parent's shirt. That is another microbe joining the party. By the time you are a toddler, you are packed full of bacteria, and that mix will continue evolving for the rest of your life depending on where you live, what you eat, how much you travel, and yes, how often you wash your hands. Your gut bacteria help break down complex carbohydrates that your own cells cannot handle. They produce short-chain fatty acids that fuel your gut lining. They fight off bad bacteria by outcompeting them. They even help train your immune system to recognize friend from foe. But it is not all sunshine and probiotics. Your body is also home to some potential troublemakers bacteria that can cause infections if they get into the wrong place or if your immune system is weak. That is why hospitals are so concerned about antibiotic-resistant bacteria. If your body's friendly neighborhood microbes go rogue or if they get replaced by dangerous ones, you are in for a rough time. Still, for most healthy people, the balance holds. Your microbiome stays in check. The good guys keep the peace, the bad guys stay quiet, and your body functions like a well-run city full of invisible citizens all doing their jobs. You cannot wash them off. Now, before you run to the shower, let me save you the effort you cannot scrub them off. Even if you used antibacterial soap on every square inch of your body, you would still be covered in bacteria within minutes. They are in the air. They are in your food. They are on every surface you touch. Your body is not a battlefield to keep clean. It is more like an ecosystem to maintain. And the goal is not to kill all the bacteria. It is to keep the good ones happy so they keep the bad ones in check. It is kind of like a neighborhood. You do not want to burn down the whole street. You just want to keep things tidy and make sure the weird neighbor down the block does not start a fire. So where does that leave us? We now know that your body is home to roughly 39 trillion bacterial cells, slightly more than the number of your own human cells. Most of them live peacefully in your gut. Some help you, some do not. But together they make up a community that is essential to your health. And here is the kicker, without them, you would not survive. You need your bacteria as much as they need you. But here is where it gets wild. Scientists are starting to realize that your microbiome, the collection of bacteria, viruses, and fungi living inside you is not just a side character in your story. 
story. It might be the co-author. Let us talk about what these microbes are really up to and why they may hold the key to some of the biggest health questions we face today. You might have heard the phrase gut feeling tossed around in conversation, but it turns out that phrase is not just poetic, it is biologically accurate. Your gut and your brain are constantly in communication through what scientists call the gut-brain axis. This is a real physical two-way communication system involving nerves, hormones, and chemical messengers. And guess who has their fingerprints all over it? Your bacteria. Some gut bacteria produce neurotransmitters, the very same brain chemicals that regulate mood like serotonin and dopamine. In fact, around 90% of your body's serotonin is actually produced in your gut, not your brain. Researchers now believe that imbalances in gut bacteria may be linked to anxiety, depression, and even cognitive disorders. And while we are still figuring out the exact cause and effect, one thing is clear. When your microbiome is upset, you feel it not just in your stomach, but in your head. It is like your bacteria are texting your brain emojis all day long, and sometimes they are sending frowny faces. Modern antibiotics are one of the greatest medical breakthroughs in human history. They save lives by killing harmful bacteria. But here is the downside. They are not that picky. When you take antibiotics, they do not just kill the bacteria causing your infection. They also wipe out large swaths of your healthy gut bacteria, your allies. It is like dropping a bomb to get rid of a few bad guys and accidentally taking out half the neighborhood. This disruption to your microbiome can lead to digestive problems, weaker immunity, and sometimes more serious issues like C. Difficile infection, a nasty bacterial overgrowth that happens when your gut's defenses are down. That is why doctors today are becoming more cautious with antibiotics. Because every time we use them, we are not just treating disease, we are reshaping an entire ecosystem inside our bodies. So what do doctors do when someone's microbiome is so damaged that nothing else works? Well, they give them a new one from someone else. It is called a fecal microbiota transplant. And yes, it involves taking healthy bacteria from a donor's poop and putting it into the patient's colon. Sounds gross, it is, but it works. For patients suffering from recurrent C, difficile infections who have tried everything else and failed FMT can have a 90% success rate. That is higher than many traditional drugs. In fact, researchers are now exploring how microbiome transplants could help with other conditions too, like ulcerative colitis obesity, even Parkinson's. Should we be screening super healthy people for elite level microbiomes the way we screen athletes for Olympic teams? Ever wonder why two people can eat the same thing and gain weight differently? Some of that may come down to genetics, but some of it might be bacterial. Studies have shown that certain bacterial profiles are more efficient at extracting calories from food, which means two people can eat the same cheeseburger, but one of them might harvest more calories from it because of the bacteria in their gut. This has led scientists to wonder, is it possible to hack the microbiome for weight control? Could we one day develop personalized diets or probiotics based on your gut bacteria? Maybe even treat obesity by shifting someone's microbial balance? We are not there yet, but research is moving fast, and the idea that your weight could depend not just on willpower, but on trillions of microscopic roommates, that is a game changer. In the future, we might see a shift in medicine that focuses not just on the human body, but on the ecosystem within it. Imagine getting a full scan of your gut microbiome before receiving treatment for depression or diabetes. Imagine personalized probiotics tailored to your microbial needs like a prescription yogurt designed just for you. Some companies are already working on this. We are entering the era of microbiome medicine where healing the body might start with restoring the balance inside your gut. You are not just a person. You are an ecosystem, a walking rainforest, a galaxy of life wrapped in human skin. And the next time you feel a little off, maybe it is not your head or your heart that needs checking. Maybe it is just your bacteria asking for a snack.